Hello everyone and thanks for being here for the second part of this of this talk. The first the first part as as you may know took place in, in Dubai on the Swiss Pavilion where Fidinam hosted a fantastic a fantastic event. We we focus on the NFTs and uh, we just say something uh, last week about the NFTs we briefly described them and then there was a fantastic conversation between me and and Antonio Signorini, they was there present in, in person. Um, so we, we saw as the NFTs initially affected the world of digital visual products like digital art, design, 3D modeling, and that for the first time found their way to be testified as original and, and unique. Uh, and this has been reflected in what we called as the title of this talk, Revolution, a Revolution especially in the traditional way of producing art and in the so-called traditional art art market. Mm, we all have in mind uh, these JPEGs files or videos sold for a huge amount of money in NFTs dedicated platform like OpenSea, but also in auction houses, still uh, so-called traditional auction houses like Christie's or, or Sotheby's. Um, due to that, most of the attention has been thrown to the relationship between the NFTs and the art world, considering NFTs as an evolution of, of fine art collecting. And this is what we are going to describe tonight, together with our guest, Henrietta Leung from Hong Kong, uh, director and owner of Ora Ora Gallery, and the artist Tyler Jackson that is joining us from, from Los Angeles. Um, we... I mean, I'm, I also start asking myself, I question myself uh, in this new environment, how to describe an NFT. And that's what we did in, in Dubai. That's what we discussed in Dubai. Briefly, we can say that uh, an NFT is a unique digital item with blockchain managed, managed ownership. So um, the blockchain uh, is a shared immutable IT protocol that is used to testify that a specific product, a specific um, digital product is, is unique and cannot be copied. So a non-fungible token uh, means a way to safely and undoubtedly identify a digital product. And we also described two characteristics that emerged and I really would like to, to point out again is the rarity of the digital items testified by the blockchain and, the, and their tradability. So the possibility to free trade is NFTs on open marketplaces like OpenSea, Nifty Gateways. These are the major, major platform. So these open marketing crypto value systems uh, means a place where there are not intermediaries. And as soon as an NFT is purchased, it can be put out again and sold and then sold immediately. This is another very interesting point to compare the NFTs world and, and the art market, because differently from collecting traditional art, where the value is most of the time given by a stable and constant, a slow increase of the full body of the world that create a collection, the NFTs can be flipped immediately and gain value on, on the momentum. So tonight uh, we prepared a brief discussion with Henrietta. Henrietta, thanks for being here. Thanks for being here tonight. And we, we really would like to know what's the situation in Hong Kong, because we know that this technology is growing fast in Asia. So can you please give us a little background of what's happening, of what's happening in Hong Kong? And, and also, you know, a year ago, the NFTs were mainly based on art and collectibles. But what's the situation now? I, I really would like to know if, there is like how people from other businesses should be looking for for this new technology sure thank you so much ricardo and uh, thank you everyone for inviting me to join um, it's a pleasure to be um, speaking to you guys um, from hong kong and i have prepared some material maybe i can share the screen with all of you so Hong Kong has been uh, very much uh, very vibrant in the development and the progression of cryptocurrencies investment and also beca uh, because of that um, um, 
because Hong Kong has been a very uh, huge international financial industry. So when Web3 based cryptocurrency comes alive, Hong Kong has been uh, very much um, into de the development and and has been um, participated by, by lots of people uh, around town and including um, uh, tech gurus, um, banking, financials, uh, VC people, and uh, many have taken uh, on projects in NFTs, both in trading or building. So it has been um, uh, pretty vibrant since uh, two or three years ago. So as a gallery owner and a, and a serial entrepreneur, we have also been participating and studying on this. So um, yes. Since 2021, we would probably be um, much more um, articulate and eloquent in, in discussing with, with each other about uh, NFT. So um, after studied and researched for a few years on this, we have decided to, to, to start uh, researching and, um, and proposing some NFTs for the public uh, back in 2021, March, during the uh, Art Basel Hong Kong. So we were one of the first to explore the possibility of NFT art, which are unique and uh, perhaps with few numbers and unlike um, the collectible projects, which I will describe a little more. But I want to show you some of uh, an example of the works we've done. It, this one is from Peng Jian and it, it comes with sound. So here the artist actually um, painted the artwork um, with mineral colors. After that, he actually invited a video artist to help him uh, destroy the harmony that he built. And, and then knowing that there's a possibility of NFTs, he could make this each copy of this work um, a really unique piece because of the blockchain. He jumped onto the bandwagon with us and uh, we were able to market this to a cryptocurrency investor at Art Basel. So this is the one with, the, with sound. Maybe we'll see the bit in the middle. Cindy Ng actually creates um, performance art. These are actually high resolution video with um, filming her pouring of uh, various material onto a tray. The seemingly fluid like ink like images that you see are actually material like milk, wine, etc. But with the NFT development, Cindy has been able to reach different um, collectors with us. Yeah, so just want to give you guys a taste of it. And um, apart from that, like this is what Aurora has done, but um, I want to highlight some of the major um, brands and companies in Hong Kong have done really well. So Animoca brand is a homegrown Hong Kong company uh, started up in Cyberport, which is a science technology incubating hub by the Hong Kong government. But Animoca brands is currently a 50 billion US dollar worth of company with the latest valuation and a leader of digital um, entertainment, blockchain, etc. They have been active investor into lots of different companies and also having their own token, including the sand token of Sandbox, um, Crazy King and other um, other brands. They have been really successful in creating intellectual properties together with huge brands like Disney, Snoop Dogg, um, you know, Formula E and, um, and Sandbox actually became their subsidiary. And they have since uh, six years ago, uh, built themselves into a, over 150 uh, NFT investment 
related companies, and they have been working to decentralize like the platform on gaming and fintech and even virtual land trading. So now I want to talk about some very interesting homegrown collectible projects. So this one, Lucky Kittens, has been one of the um, very hot project started in Hong Kong by four, four or five young guys in their 20s. Um, it is a Solana based project and um, basically the project was sold out in two minutes. And the images you see on the left side that is flashing are the collectibles. So I know John, the founder, and he has been very much conscious in building a sustainable project after this success. So now they're talking about um, uh, building a like-minded community, um, trying to get into a hybrid of um, uh, virtual and uh, physical experiences for the for their um, NFT holders, um, including products arrangement, um, um, T-shirts, retail experience, and even F&B experience. So they have been working hard to build different merch and hopefully they will become like a brand people known to be uh, traditional as well as uh, virtual. And you might have heard um, abroad that Hong Kong has started um, one of the first, um, interestingly, one of the first um, digital art fair in Asia, uh, if not the world. So this art fair has been such a huge success that um, the fair has to extend uh, like double its time. And the, um, we spoke to the owner, uh, one of the owners, uh, Julian Howard, and they were saying that like because they saw the rapid expansion of um, NFT in the second half of 2021 and then what that was why and how they started thinking about um, uh, building a fair to support the needs and um, they have sold um, amazing 7.7 .7 million US dollar worth of NFTs to 27,000 collectors during just like about 10 days of the fair and the collectors have come from all, all walks of life old and new um, the youngest collector I asked um, and they told me it's about 13 years of age uh, of course he came with his parents but um, and the oldest collector was about 102 years old um, they did a very interesting survey and 55% um, of the collectors who bought at the fair um, were 50, uh, sorry were 40 years old old or less and 97 percent of them want to know more about nfts and 70 percent want to buy nft and that's why it gave them uh, a lot of confidence and they want to really stay and to grow and perhaps to include many more um, galleries in the coming year they have uh, been since the success they have been uh, meeting up and working with a lot of tech uh, partners when they started they worked it with Samsung already but they're in discussion with Meta they want to provide some uh, more immersive and virtual experience to the audience in Hong Kong uh, in 2022. Lastly I want to highlight this um, um, successful brand called um, uh, Art, uh, All Rights Reserved who is one of the representatives of cause in in the world in the cause figurines and uh, they have always been in the forefront of uh, popular culture and recently they have um, started an nft community called the friend club and the coming project the upcoming project would be uh with john cornelia and um it i mean the the hype um, they were able to build a community of over 500,000 almost 500,000 fans on discord within four days and they only sold about 1,000 pieces and you can see how much hype they were able to build um, within that short period so those examples that I just um, illustrated I want to encourage uh, you guys to see how fast uh, Hong Kong and different parts of Asia has been uh, growing and and working to um, you know uh, I guess bring in the digital generative um, and to be part of that community yeah and since then, we uh, Aura Aura also tried different models. So we have now 
um, successfully launched our um, second show, Poetic Enigma, recently at the gallery. And it, you will be surprised how, because um, we wanted to experiment whether the NFTs are only uh, being bought up by uh, new generative young people and, and traditional collectors are absolutely not interested. But on the contrary, we, ha we are able to invite a lot of our existing collectors and they appreciated the fact that we have been curating the show and, and provide them with a selection of art and collectibles because uh, they, they felt very confused um, accessing open seas and other platforms by themselves. So um, we want to illustrate that like galleries around the world can still have a, a very good position as a curator of um, other art except ex, ex, um, as well as NFT art. Yes, thank you, Henrietta. Exactly. My, my question actually is so, of course, so I visited your show and, and, and it was great. It was fantastic because it was a new way to, to present this to, to, to the audience, right? And actually, I have one more question to you, um, because mm, what's the outlook of the NFTs uh, next year? Mm, and how can the, this market be sustainable? Because if it's true that like most of the collectors maybe that are approaching this world are young, I see there is a big interest also like in established collector. And as we say, it, like visiting your show, there was definitely like, you know, a lot of collectors were very interesting and interested and, and they were discussing about it in all over Hong Kong, if I have to, if I have to be honest. And the same uh, was, for, was for the fair, was for the digital art fair, a lot of interest and a lot of discussion. Yes. So um, I would say a year ago in Hong Kong, um, um, most people would around me haven't got a wallet yet, uh, including myself. Um, maybe I was like uh, fumbling and 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 um, stumbling upon which uh, wallet to choose from, and even. Um, I remember clearly in a year ago with MetaMask, um, which is uh, one of the most popular uh, wallets to hold NFT, a hot wallet to hold NFT, were not able to um, uh, beautifully show the the artwork um, with the video that I showed you, we, uh, the artwork we launched and sold to our collector. So um, I, I would say just 12 months ago, um, the whole world was like um, saw the hype and and the the seems to be real interest and money and everybody started continue to develop, and by by now um, it has been uh, developing in with with high correlation um, with the Ethereum. So um, uh, although there are a lot of growth in the Solana base and other chains projects, um, we would be safe to say that Ethereum based one is still very much um, in the in the know and, and very much uh, uh, supported. And the reason uh, is because a lot of the traditional investors and collectors that you and I know would have um, perhaps invested in um, Bitcoin or ETH and other uh, bigger coins. So it's um, it's because of the the um, the geometrical expansion of the Ethereum, a lot of uh, your and I collectors have started to have wallets and even cold wallets like um, to to hold their funds and and thereby um, becoming a little more savvy with the usage of of this wallet. Um, also, other marketplaces like OpenSea, Nifty Gateway that you mentioned, they, they all got better investors. Uh, OpenSea has become a unicorn as well. And so it has, it's just getting easier and easier for laymen like you, you and I to, to operate on them. And because of the fact that there are a lot of um, major, major companies, uh, in, including those in Hong Kong, uh, listed companies have invested into Animoca and, and open seas and other and their subsidiaries are like so um, they have been encouraging a lot of uh, brands and you we all both see that there were a lot of announcements um, including k11 buying up land in sandbox and um, um, traditional la like rappers also buying up lands and and so just Two weeks ago, or this last week, they are continuously uh, seeing news in in Asia, including HSBC Bank uh, being the first one in Asia to to launch the financial institution in Sandbox. So 
um, I see that this this year and it's just four months in 2022 and and continuing to until the la, uh, the the end of this year, everybody will ex be exploring the the actual um, uh, utility and and sustainability of NFT and the metaverse um, in relation to business development, um, uh, fintech, and art and education, etc. Thank you so much, Arietta. So we see that the future is bright for NFTs and it looks brighter in, in Asia in this moment. Um, so we were in Dubai with Antonio, we discussed about the, the art fair because the art fair in Dubai just closed and there were a lot of NFTs and of course digital projects there as well. Um, but the same, I visited Los Angeles um, one month ago where, where of course I spent my time with, with Tyler is a big friend of mine. Uh, so, Tyler, hi. How are you? How are you I doing? am good. I'm good. Hi. So, um, you know, I just need to ask you the same question that I asked Antonio and that, that I asked Henrietta. Uh, how is the situation in Los Angeles uh, and what's the environment of, of the NFTs in, in LA? And then maybe, if you want, because Tyler, as you can see on the background of his camera, his canvases are are there uh, then if you want to tell us something about the way you are thinking about you know using this technology and experiment uh, experimentation you're doing any plan for the future using using this media so yes please give us you know a little background sure so i think what i'll do is i'll, I'll tell you a little bit about i mean I'll, the la scene um we have it on the ground but obviously these are it's a digital art form. So this could spread over same things that are happening in Asia are somewhat happening here as well. And then I'll tell you a little bit about my personal look at a few of these things. So one of the things you'll see is um, we went to freeze, I guess maybe a few months ago. So these higher end um, art fairs, we didn't see any NFTs there, uh, but you'll start to see them other places. Like there was a, there's another one called LA Art Fair. We saw a few of them there. There's a whole section to the fair with screens uh, and everything was uh, kind of integrated that way. Um, we have one NFT exclusive gallery here from what I understand, I think just one at the moment. Um, I went to a, a gallery called Miras. It's newer, uh, fairly uh, important gallery, uh, a lot of good artists. What they're doing is what I see kind of what's going to happen in the future for artists. It's the the fully integrated artist. So for instance, when I went to their show, most of the work, I forget what the artist's name is, uh, but it was mostly acrylic on canvas that you saw. But then as you went through the show a little bit more, they had huge uh, statues. Uh, and then once you passed the, the statues, you went into a certain section and they had NFTs on screens. They had projected NFTs that interacted with your body. Uh, they also had an app where if you scanned a QR code uh, and uh, took it over to one of the statues, it would detect it and add virtual skins to the, the sculpture. So what it seems like is happening is we're, we'll get into what a, an NFT project is and kind of my feelings on this, but in terms of the traditional art world, um, traditional art world, I mean, let's just say the physical art world or the, the art market as it's been in the past, is um, it's starting to warm up to it. And right now I think artists and galleries and curators and everybody are exploring what to do with it. There's a few trends that I'll, I'll get into a little bit more, uh, but it's still very experimental, but it's exploding. Uh, as Henrietta pointed out that it's even over the past year, year and a half, even the past four months, it's getting much, much more, uh, it's getting crazy. So even since the last time we spoke, um, one thing I noticed was Twitter now allows you to use your NFT as your profile picture, and then it gives it a special outline so people know that it's an NFT that's used as your profile picture. So we, we're starting to see things like this where there's more, more adoption. There's also um, an event I wish someone was just telling me about the other night where obviously famous people are a big thing here, but uh, there was an event that you could, you could attend to digitally. And if you bought an NFT, and the NFT was your skin for the event because it was a 3D NFT. So you have these integrations that are happening everywhere and we're starting to see it more and more throughout bigger organizations. So it's it, it's one of those things that it's coming, it's here and it's gonna keep, keep happening. So there's that part to it. Um, when we get into these NFT projects, I'm a little skeptical of them as 
an artist. So what these typically are is what you'll see is um, you will see it's a figure and it's usually a bunch of these figures in different permutations. Um, you'll maybe have like a, the, I think Henrietta showed the, the cats. I'm a little skeptical of those projects because with those, usually what the deal is, is that you have, you have an artist, um, you have a team and you have founders, uh, you have a roadmap and utility, and then you have a community. The community is usually based on discord. Uh, usually you need to have a, for a successful project, you need a prominent Twitter uh, homepage. But the thing that um, we're seeing is that it isn't, it isn't the artist. It's the artist is part of a project. Uh, so this is more, I can equate this a little bit to maybe when they were making websites in the 90s. During that boom, you needed uh, someone to design your web page. With these, they just need people to design um, figures in these instances. So you'll have, um, like say, Crypto Kitties, or even, I guess the most famous one was the, the apes. You'll see different permutations of this, and there's a lot of projects like this. And usually what's attached to them is some, type, some sort of utility. Uh, there was one that was called... I heard it's like million dollar babies club or something like that. And basically there's a bunch of these NFTs that are babies that are dressed up as different types of adults, whether it's like a banker or a worker or whatever. And if you buy this NFT, the utility behind it is that you get stock in a casino in the metaverse. Kind of interesting. Uh, so usually these projects have something like that. You'll have a new, be able to and attend an exclusive event you have this utility of maybe you get a uh, metaverse land, uh, but we're also seeing uh, physical objects uh, that are attached to them. Maybe it could be swag, it could be a t-shirt, this type of stuff. Um, so I am usually, I don't know if these things will last, uh, in my opinion, at least in the fine art world. Um, fine art world, I guess we can call it that traditional art world because there a lot of these ones that we're seeing are kind of short lived. They kind of explode, there's a lot of hype and then they disappear. And one of the reasons is this is the, why these things are making so much money is hype off of previous projects. So what will usually happen is you'll have um, an NFT community or project that, that comes out. And then the people that are involved in that, they'll usually go and try to make another one. And when they do that, when investors go to look, if they're going to invest in this project, they look at who is, who's on it. Who is, are these people familiar with the NFT scene? If they're fairly famous, that's when you have a better chance of these things working out. Um, and then, so it's it's one of those things that you have, you have a lot of people that are into the scene. And so once people, an artist or someone that's part of a project sells a bunch of NFTs, makes a bunch of money, they usually take that money and reinvest it into the community. So it's very uh, community driven. It's usually the artists or the people involved in the projects are buying into newer projects. So that's where the, the hype machine kind of happens. And that's why I'm a little bit, I would pump the gas on stuff like that. Um, or pump the brakes rather. <laughs> uh, but in terms of uh, traditional artwork and how, how I kind of see this going, how I'm uh, trying to work it into my work is this is a beautiful opportunity for artwork that was created digitally to actually be sold. I mean, in the past, um, when you made a 3D object, there was no real way you could sell the original file. Now you can. Uh, and it's the same thing we used to seeing when you go to say a museum or a show, you'll see uh, like a video artist and they'll have their video playing on some old uh, Cathoy Ray tube TV. And in the past, the galleries would sometimes sell the actual TV. Uh, now you can buy the actual video file, especially when it's created digitally. It's more of a pure um, form of the artwork itself. Because by now, I'm, I'm sure everybody agrees that um, like 3D objects, animated videos, videos, these type of things are truly artwork. They're made on a computer. Uh, but they're, they're some of the most advanced forms of artwork there are out there. So the way I see this um, moving forward, uh, at least for myself, I see a little bit of the what I call the fully integrated artist where I'll do a show. Uh, actually, me and Ricardo and I did a show in Hong Kong where I had an NFT mixed with paintings on the wall as well. Uh, so I'll see, I think artists are going to start to go that direction um, who are usually, if they're starting off as uh, easel based artists, I imagine that they'll, once they have their kind of style, they'll, they'll, this will lead into um, statues and then it'll turn into NFTs. And I think the real benefit of when we're doing NFTs is that we're using the technology for what it's supposed to be used for. So, uh, for example, if it's once a few that I have minted so far, um, they're uh, animated GIFs. 
they're taken with um, analog cameras. I'm still old school, but taking these analog photos that uh, these old cameras that take 3D pictures and then turn it into a GIF. So you have uh, an actual moving image. So I think this is where where it's where the real value of this thing is going to happen is when you're integrating the the digital technology into things. Yes, I I have to say I do agree with this. You know, integrated artist. Uh, so from what we are saying, um, I it's quite clear that the the galleries still have a fundamental role. Arietta, do you agree? Um, I mean, the way the gallery has to operate, and this is. A question actually but it's also my thought um, is to give you know a real platform where a creation a curatorial project is still possible and and you know give the space to an artist that can definitely work on the nfts but uh, in case also work like in, in the physical world so i really see the gallery the art galleries having a role on these and maybe this is what most scared you know i scared uh, the galleries in the last in the last year maybe they saw themselves out of the whole thing while i really think there is a space and there is a need still a need for for galleries and artists to to work together Arietta, what what do you think um i think that the meaning of gallery a uh, definition of gallery is also evolving um what um tyler explained and um, and shared just now is, is meaningful very meaningful and um um fundamentally we can look at nft um in our area in the bigger art and design world to 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 evolve involve nft collectible projects let's call them nft collectible projects with the profile photos figures etc with thousands and eight eight thousand pieces that those are called like um, um nft um, collectible projects. And then there would be um, uh, uh, lots of opportunity for artists like Tyler and galleries like yours and mine to brainstorm and work with artists to help them, support them to integrate into different media. So basically for, for uh, fine art or contemporary artists, um, they can just look at um, um, NFT as a, f a new form of canvas and a more uh, secured way to present their uh, in interdisciplinary or uh, media art as, as Tyler has been describing. And I find that um, very, um, very interesting. Like the artist I presented, uh, Peng Jian, who showed with us last year in, in Basel with the NFTs, he is also integrating his upcoming uh, huge retro sh retrospective show in in uh, Hangzhou, China, with both NFTs and um, uh, and uh, canvases and also other objects. Um, so um, I I mean, as the as galleries, um, we have been trained and invested, right? Our people and and our company structure is trained and very well equipped to become the the voice and the and the eyes for artists the marketing and the business development engine for the artists so for artists sake and there i receive a lot of questions about oh with nfts does do galleries still have a role well it depends on what kind of gallery you are if you are like a gallery sitting there just opening a door and closing um, I'm hanging a few paintings without a program. I, I'm not sure if they have a role. However, with galleries like ours and yours and other, um, a lot of uh, uh, up and coming t uh, great galleries in LA and, and of course top galleries as well, um, they could either be supporting and uh, financially or, uh, or a business development wise for the um, for the artist who wants to build a project. You see Murakami being a Gagosian artist are still very free to create his uh, flower, Murakami flower, which is a collectible project, um, while Gagosian are going to sell his uh, flower canvases, right? So they can always be integrated business development and marketing program. Um, but But I mean, I want to convince Tyler not to be too worried about, or not worried, but uh, a step on a pause with the NFT collectible project, because the collectible projects which um, uh, which are creating maybe uh, thousands of pieces could be a good way 
and a secure way because they have with the blockchain technology and and having the nft collectible um to for example you need to show your collectible to enter into tyler's show we we it would be um we'll feel maybe generally more interested to really tie in and, and build this community because eventually you have a very tight fan base um who are who are younger and who could be uh, from around the world instantly and when you when an artist travel from LA to Hong Kong you can do a club thing with your community um, I, I find both um, pretty pretty interesting to to be worked hand in hand on all the news that you see uh, uh, that are negative I would say mostly from scammers but scammers exist everywhere it, 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 scammers exist in the old world as well so we need to be ultra careful with with nft because it's fluid um it's anonymous and 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 and, and most of us like myself are not that tech savvy so we need to be uh, surrounded by people who are and uh, and then we should be fine i feel yes tyler of course now you can you can reply uh, the conversation was very interesting and yeah, but i yeah. want to point it out that uh, we received some question after the first part of the talk in Dubai and the legal side was very interesting because as just you say, the that people are st still, or I mean, they will be even more uh, scared about, you know, the tech side because scams can definitely happen happening everywhere. But this is something that, you know, people are, are scared of. Uh, and then, then maybe we'll discuss about that, but I'll pass the word to Tyler first, if you want to reply and read about the collectible projects. Yeah, I mean, I, I agreed with um, pretty much everything uh, Henrietta was, was saying. I think it's just when we get into the collectible projects, it looks like Pokemon cards to me. And there is like collectible stuff. I just don't think it's truly for the art scene. It's a part of the NFT scene, but I don't think it should be. I don't think it's really part of the fine art scene, especially when they're using, I don't know. I, I think it's just a... Like I'm saying, it seems more like collectible cards, but I do agree with uh, as far as making a community uh, based on the NFT, like having your having your collectors have exclusive access, I think is important. So it reflects the um, traditional art world uh, in, in that sense where my collectors, I would probably uh, give them first choice at the new uh, when there's new work that's coming out. If you're inside of a program, you have more access to that that artwork first off. Uh, it's just if it, if I was approached uh, by a team of say like five people and they said we want you to uh, do variations on one of my paintings for a, a thousand variations of it as a collectible I would see it as a degradation of my work <laughs> that's just me I know that I know that like uh, there there is I just don't see the value in it um, because uh, like a there is value to like say uh, certain baseball cards Pokemon cards magic cards these type of collectibles uh, but in terms of the, I'm going to get really philosophical about art right now, but the, the power of art is that it's able to stir your emotions. And that's, that's the type of artwork that I try to make that reaches out and touches you. Something that when you enter a room, you see a piece of artwork, it, it captures you. And that's the type of artwork that I think we should be promoting in the art world. And if it's just something like, hey, it's a cute little cat, that's not the same thing to me. So I do see the value in it. It's just something that I I. I don't know if it will lead into um, these larger galleries. I don't think you'll see stuff like that. Um, I don't know. You probably will see a, a little bit of it in the future, but um, I think there, there are stronger forms of art than doing a collectible scene. Thanks, Tyler. Very, very clear. It kind of looked like, you know, also, Warhol was replicating his, his works for <laughs> thousands of sure. times, and now they were billion. But yeah, no, but just a still, joke, just still a joke. A physical, I, I understand. Physical piece, you know what I mean? I understand it, your it point was, of view. It, it was Warhol doing it, you know what I mean? We, he had some people in the factory, but it was, uh, I, I don't like the idea of it being a business, because then it becomes a brand. It's no longer, it's like, a, it's a company. It's no longer an artist. That's just... I, Definitely, I see your point. I see your point, and this is why we are here, and it's very interesting. Uh, before closing, again, maybe maybe just a word about about this, Henriette, about you know, uh, how do you think? Like from a legal, there are two points mainly. One is like you know that collectors are maybe scared of being like that tech or 
to you know need that, that tech bait to to protect themselves when they are purchasing when they are collecting and the second point this is very interesting this is something that we didn't say we didn't see before we, we say it in in dubai uh, that you know whoever buys a work link to an nft does not purchase the work in the strict sense right so you can copy the digital file embrace with the nfts nft as many times as you want and the copy is literally as good as the original um but of course the NFT, nfts are designed to give you the ownership of the work so we, we were really discussing this point with collectors last time so to put it in terms of physical art collecting it's like everybody can buy a print of a monet but no one uh, i mean just a person can can get can buy can buy the original so this idea of replicating um the the, the jpeg this is something that really scares the the collectors of course especially the most you know old style and and establish and establish collector do, do you Arietta, want to say a word about it yes um thank you so yes we we've done a lot of uh, discussions and uh, workshops over here in asia in hong kong uh, together with uh, lawyers and um, top law firms um, and we did a workshop with hkg including a deacon's partner right remember and we do so i think um, people here um, who are into i guess pursuing the potentials of the metaverse and empathy are, are clear of the potential risks um but the thing is i think the discussion should revolve around media art itself and and not so much physical art versus with media art because that type of conversation can can be the same without with or without the nft blockchain attachment so having like we all like I, my, my gallery is involved in um, um, marketing and and collect um, collection promotion of of um, moving images and videos and projections for for many years and and traditionally we will have to do it th this way we'll um, we'll have a um, USB um, together with a contract that my uh, collector like even large corporation will have to sign I, I make it really tacky in a box a, a nice box I'll put the the USB and then the contract and and then we'll even do an ink inkjet print on a particular part of the moving image so that the so rather traditional collector will have something to hang they will have a USB to hold on and a contract that tells them there are only 10 or whatever additions that uh, however number of additions that the artists have started out um, so in terms of uh, just development of NFT, I think that there's no difference. The only legal difference would likely, well, it's arguable. Lawyers were saying you can't replace a smart contract with the actual contract, but there are a lot of things that the smart contract can automatically govern, like royalty sharing to Tyler, uh, like um, like uh, um, how many um, pieces, like that, that how many number um, that this one, for example, the artwork we minted for for Art Basel had five copies. So there are five unique NFTs to each copy. So um, if if the artists decide to create media art, they usually have one, more than one copy that I'm handling, we, at the moment we're handling NFT art the same way as media art. Yeah, and, and I think that would be quite safe. And in terms of, um, interestingly though, uh, in terms of NFT, um, collectible project and art. I see uh, quite a lot of uh, um, fine print um, on them, even in OpenSea that they would say uh, sometimes you own uh, you own full commercial right to these uh, figures, these JPEGs, or you do not own any commercial right. So there are declaration by the designers or the artists um, when they when they start planning on this but there there are certainly a lot of um going ongoing legal conflict because this whole thing about the metaverse and 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 um i guess the blockchain tech it's about de decentralization whereas um you know like each country and jurisdiction would we need the law the legal framework to to govern but i just want to highlight uh, something about china if you're interested to know because um i i i i find it quite intriguing so i just prepare a short uh, image a uh, note about china that i want to tell you guys so 
um, as you, you were discussing about legal framework and, and control, China ha doesn't allow um, public chains to be available. Uh, Hong Kong is still running under a uh, two system. So we are uh, together like with US and other countries in the, in the rest of the world where we access um, our, our, our um, NFT art project and NFT collectible projects can be hooked onto any public chains we choose, Solana, other things, and, and ETH. But in China, they, they can't uh, because uh, cryptocurrency is illegal in, uh, in China. So, um, but then China has huge in blockchain technology. So it's very interesting. They create this, um, these type of uh, things called alliances. So they call this blockchain alliances, which are related to the provincial government. And currently in China, there are no secondary market to NFTs. So um, they, are, they are able to create these smart contracts almost exactly like what you see in, uh, with the ETH and Solana. However, they will not be, they will not be able to be traded um, twice. And um, the collection rights of these NFTs are also restricted. So they, as, as Tyler was suggesting, there are no copyright and ownership of these artwork to, to the NFT holder at present. They are still uh, completely uh, with, the, with the seller and, and there are a lot of uh, rules that are set in the, in the platform. And um, so it, it's, it's really interesting for China to consider uh, to become very competitive, like every other uh, industry, they will have to really consider how they're going to link their, their closed uh, blockchain alliance with um, the public chains that we are at the moment uh, very used to. China has also launched its digital renminbi which um, it's going to be used to, they are used to uh, transact uh, NFTs. And so uh, will there be a cross rate between digital NFT and Bitcoin? Will there be a cross rate between uh, China, uh, digital uh, uh, renminbi and Ethereum? Um, these are things uh, that we would be waiting for. But um, analysts in China are thinking, uh, consider they even have a number. If China were to continue to uh, with this alliance type, I mean again, a blockchain link related to provincial government uh, uh, to be used by a com commercial organization, then the, the market would be much smaller, maybe by 2026, it's about 6 billion US dollar. But if they work hard and open and find their way to link with us in the rest of the world, then it, it could become as big as 30 billion US dollar. Yeah, just some notes for you to consider. And not. Yes, not this, very is, interesting. this is very interesting. Thanks, Henrietta, because, you know, the, definitely China is a, is a big player uh, in, in this, in technology, but also in art. So, so we're really looking forward. Okay, say so, uh, nothing. Really, thank you so much for being here. And Antonio Signorini was with us in Dubai and was a great talk with him as well. He's having his, his project, so we kind of, you know, an overlook on all, all over the world, like in Dubai, in Hong Kong, in, and in LA, about these NFTs. So thanks a lot again. Thanks, Pidinam, for giving us the opportunity of organizing this talk. And that was very, very nice from all of you. Thank you so much. And we Thank speak you. soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.